Hello there, I'm Miss Corrine. Welcome to the Treehouse. I'm so glad you're here today. We're gonna have a wonderful time. We're gonna read a story together and do some songs and a couple rhymes. All right, let's get started. Okay, before we get started on our story, I'd like to teach you a little rhyme. And it goes like this. Here's a little bunny with a nose so funny. And this is his hole in the ground. When a noise he hears, up perks his ears, and he jumps into his hole in the ground. If you've ever been wandering in the park and seen a little bunny, you know how fast he jumps back into his hole. Okay, now it's time to read our story of the day. So today we've got a book called Just You and Me by Sam McBratney. The pictures have been illustrated by Ivan Bates. And the Scholastic Company has given us permission to read this book today. It's one of my favorites and I hope you enjoy it. Just You and Me. Once there was a little gosling goose and her name was Little Goosey. One day Little Goosey and Big Gander Goose, who looked after her, set out to walk down to the river. They hadn't gone far when the wind began to blow. Gander Goose looked up at the dark clouds racing across the sky and said, A storm is coming. We'd better find a place to hide. A nice warm place? Just for me and you, said Little Goosey. Just us, said Gander Goose. A place where we can rest until the storm is over. And they hurried into the woods looking for a place to hide. Will there be thunder when the storm comes? asked Little Goosey. Well, yes, there could be some thunder, said Gander Goose. Soon they found a hole in a ditch, but there was someone in there already. A small gray whiskered mouse. She was hiding from the storm too. You can stay in here with me if you like, said the mouse. Little Goosey whispered to Gander Goose. I don't want anybody when the thunder comes. Just you and me. Gander Goose thanked the small gray whiskered mouse. It's a bit too damp in here for us, he said. You're very kind, but I think we'll look for someplace else. Goodbye. When the other two had gone, the mouse saw some wet moss growing up the walls. Oh, it is a bit damp in here, she thought to herself. I'll look for a better place too. Little Goosey and Gander Goose went farther into the woods, looking for a place to hide. They found a hole among the roots of a tall tree, but there was someone in there already. A squirrel with a high proud tail. Would you like to stay in here with me, said the squirrel. Little Goosey whispered to Gander Goose, but I don't want anybody else, just you and me. Gander Goose thanked the squirrel with the high proud tail. I can see a little daylight above our heads, he said. You're very kind, but I think we'll look for someplace else. Goodbye. When the other two had gone, the squirrel looked up and saw the sky through the trunk of the hollow tree. The rain. It could easily run in through that hole, he thought to himself. I'll try to find a better place too. There go. Little Goosey and Gander Goose ventured farther into the woods. They found an interesting cave among the rocks. But a rabbit with furry ears had found it before them. We could all stay here together if you like, said the rabbit. Little Goosey nestled into the soft feathers of Gander Goose and said quietly, I don't want there to be anybody else when the thunder comes, just you and me. Gander Goose thanked the rabbit with furry ears. There are too many stones in here for us, he said. You're very kind, but I think we'll look for someplace else. Goodbye. When the other two had gone, the rabbit couldn't find a space to lie down comfortably. It is too stony in here, she thought to herself. I'll look for a better place too. She goes. 
Little Goosey was beginning to feel tired after all of that searching for a place to hide. But then they found a hole behind a bush at the bottom of a hill. This looks like a good place to be out of the storm, said Gander Goose. And there's no one here. Just us, yawned Little Goosey. And she made a tunnel under some blown in leaves so that she wouldn't hear the thunder if it came. And she lay down to sleep. The storm arrived. A great wind blew through the trees and the rain came down. In the fields and in the woods, no one could be seen for they were all hiding from the storm. The dark clouds passed over. The wind died down and soon the skies were clear again. Little Goosey blinked in the ray of sunlight shining into the hole. Then she heard someone behind her. This was a good place to hide from the storm, said the small gray whiskered mouse. It was, agreed the squirrel with the high proud tail. A very good place to hide from the storm, said the rabbit with the furry ears. The mouse, the squirrel and the rabbit waved goodbye and then ran off into the woods. This was a good place to hide from the storm, little Goosey laughed, for all of us. Gander Goose looked out at the trees, still dripping after all the rain. It was. And now, I think we'll walk down to the river, he said. Just us? asked little Goosey. Gander Goose smiled and said, just you and me. And that's the end of our story. When you're out walking through the woods, you might find some places where animals might hide from storms and other dangers. These animals, they found a hole in the ditch, in the trunk of a tree. Remember there was a cave in and amongst the rocks? And then there was that little hole under the bushes. So when you go out, keep your eyes wide open and look out for places where animals might make homes. But please remember, don't disturb them. For some animals, this is the only space that they have to get away from the bad weather and other dangers like predators. Speaking of predators, now I'd like to tell you another story. So this story takes place on a beautiful sunny day. The skies are blue, the clouds are white and fluffy, and the sun is peeking through. There is a beautiful meadow, and the grass is growing nice and tall, and the wild flowers are blowing in the wind. And on that beautiful sunny day with the blue sky, sitting on those blades of grass was a little grasshopper. Now this little grasshopper was enjoying his wonderful time in the meadow and he didn't even know that lurking in the grass was a little deer mouse. And that deer mouse was looking at that grasshopper thinking, oh my, he's going to make a really wonderful snack. So that deer mouse crept up really, really, really quietly. And when that grasshopper wasn't looking, pounce. He grabbed that grasshopper and nibbled him up. Oh my, that deer mouse had a wonderful little snack. He was busy crunching away on it when he didn't even know lurking in and amongst the tall, tall grass was a common garter snake. Now this little snake was looking at that deer mouse thinking, mm, 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 he's going to make a delicious lunch. So that garter snake snuck up really, really, really quietly and snap, he grabbed that deer mouse and ate him up. But you know that snakes don't have teeth for chewing. Snakes have to use their muscles and they have to push their food. Maybe you can be a snake. Pretend you're pushing your food down through your throat and into your tummy. You have to work really, 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 really hard well, that snake was working so hard to eat his deer mouse lunch that he didn't even know that high up in the tree above the meadow, there was a barred owl waking up from his daytime sleep. And he was watching that snake as the sky got darker and darker. And he was thinking to himself, mm, mm, 
mmm, that snake is going to make a delicious dinner. And while that snake was so busy digesting his deer mouse lunch, that owl swooped down and snap. He grabbed that snake in his sharp talons and he took him back up to his nest. And that, my friends, is how the food chain works out in the forest. <laughs> Ooh, I hear something. I think Mr. Owl must have heard his name. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yes, indeed, he heard us talking about him. Hello, Mr. Owl, can you say hello to everybody? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ah, oh, would you like to sing your special song to all the viewers today? Mmm, all right, everybody. Here we go. Late at night, late at night, ooh, 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 ooh. Way up in the tree so tall, I can hear the owls call, ooh, 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 ooh. Late at night, late at night, ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I can hear the owls call way up in the tree so tall. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right, everybody, thank you so much for coming today. That's our story time. And now we'll get ready to go out and meet Miss Chantelle. She's going to take you on another walk around the park. Thanks for coming. Bye. Hi, I'm Chantelle and I work for Surrey Parks and today I'm going to take you on a nature walk in Redwood Park. This park is named after the redwood trees that are here and it's special because two brothers named Peter and David lived in a tree house just like this and they planted and took care of all kinds of different trees around the park. So we're going to explore a couple of them today. So we're going to look at some trees that are alive and some that are not alive. So I want you to think about what is alive in the park. Things like birds, squirrels, trees, other animals, bugs. And think about the things that are not alive, like rocks, clouds, water. First, we're going to start by exploring the trees that are very much alive. So let's go see the first one. So our first tree is a redwood tree, and this tree comes from California, and this is also how the park got its name. These trees are some of the biggest trees in the world that grow down in California. And when you're exploring here, you can feel the tree and push it a little bit, and it has this nice spongy bark. And that spongy bark can be very thick and actually makes the tree fireproof. So let's tap the tree and see what happens. So if you find these near the bottom of a tree, these are actually some redwood tree cones. And they're the ones that look very wrinkly and they're actually also fireproof. So the seeds are hiding inside and the fire is actually what would open them up and allow the seeds free to go and start growing a little tree. Our next tree also has red in its name. This is called a western red cedar and its bark is very different. It has stringy bark. So let's tap this tree and see what happens. Here are the leaves. They are pretty different. They're very scaly and more like needles. And one way to remember this tree is that it is also known as the tree of life. On to our third tree. So this bark looks very different. It's very crunchy and has deep furrows inside. And this tree is called a Douglas fir tree. So let's see what happens when we tap this one. So if you look carefully at this cone, it looks like it has tiny little feet and a tail. And you can always look for the tree cone that has mouse tails and imagine that all the little mice are named Doug and that they're hiding inside to protect their seeds. And then you'll know it's from a Douglas fir tree. 
here is a tree that is no longer alive, but it can still tell us a lot about what this tree was like when it was alive. So when you see trees like this, you can look at the tree rings, which is called the dendrochronology, and you can figure out how old this tree was. So if you look really carefully, you'll see the little rings, and that gives us a guess of how long this tree lived before it was cut down. It can also tell us a lot about its life. Maybe it was struck by lightning or there was a fire and tell us all about what that tree's story really is. Another tree that you can see while you're walking in the forest is a wildlife tree. A wildlife tree is a tree that's no longer alive, but it still has lots of life inside it. So uh, when you're walking, you can look for trees that have big holes or chunks of bark missing. And sometimes the top is very jaggedy. And those trees are homes to all different bugs and different types of fungi and woodpeckers go and tap the tree to look for bugs themselves. So even though the tree is not alive, it's full of other kinds of life now that the tree is no longer alive. So I've showed you a few of the trees that are here at Redwood Park, but there are all kinds of different trees you can find around the city. There might even be one right outside your window.